Hello, it's Scott Evans here from Digital Puppets and this is a demo of a character that we've been working on just for ourselves really. This is for a private project. If you follow, um, follow us at all, you'll see that we've been doing a few um, musical projects with animated bands and this character is going to be used for another one of those projects. Um, and I've been posting, posting some pictures online of the development. Anyway, I've got it all rigged up, so I'm going to show you how he's working. So, hello, there I am. You can see that it is tracking my face. Um, I haven't got it on... I tend to use the um, keyboard or the mouse to do the eyes. Um, it's just my personal preference. So, at first, I'm just going to give you a general look at the motion capture-ness of it. So, I always like to add in a kind of 2.5 the flavor to our rigs just to give a kind of fluid um, turn to the character so you know instead of it using the character animator you know where it cuts from the front or to the three quarters to the profile and whatnot I just like to have it so that all the features are in the one pose and then they just kind of they've all got different parallax um, behaviors added to the different elements so here if you look at the beard you look at the texture um, you look at the facial things, they've all got their own behavior and they've all got slightly different strengths to them. Um, if you look at the ears and the hair for example, they've got negative parallax so they're moving in the other direction because you'll notice as you move your head, your ears are kind of, and your hair, you know, it's kind of going in one way and your facial features are going the other way. Um, you'll notice I've also added this into the t-shirt just to give a bit more movement and it's just to give the character even though it's a 2d design and even though it looks a bit 3d that's only because i've added shadow and lighting um in the setup in photoshop it is very much a 2d design but i add all these little parallax effects to give it a almost 3d design um so yep this is i've gone for a kind of plasticine looking fella here um it's a kind of beaten up character he used to be. The idea for this particular um, project is that he used to be a kids TV show star um, 20 years ago. But now he's, you know, he's not famous anymore. And he's trying to reinvent himself as this grungy um, rock star. You know, like a lot of these pop stars that, you know, they want to escape their cutesy um, origins. You know, they want to be more grown up and whatnot. So that's what this fella is trying to do. Anyway, I've also made a bunch of expression triggers for him um, and different facial um, triggers. But let's go through the expressions first. So got this kind of shocked, horrified look. Smiley, cheeky. Kind of growly. Goofy, happy. Unimpressed. Fed up. That's a kind of ooh. <laughs> surprise. That's him kind of not happy. Back to smiling. A bit smug. Unhappy. And very much annoyed. Those are just a few of the um, expressions I've got rigged up. But you'll see I've actually got lots of different eyebrows, lots of different eyelids, loads more mouths. And I can mix and match all of those to make loads and loads and loads. It's a bit like these NFTs you see where, you know, you make a couple of assets and then you randomize them and you can make hundreds and thousands of different layers. And it's a similar thing here. You can mix and match them all and you can make loads of different expressions. Um, and if you've watched any of our videos before, um, when we do our behind the scenes explanation of how you can use Adobe Character Animator to make your own animations quickly, you'll understand why we do all these and put them up as swap sets because it also means we can animate a lot more quicker. Um, now this, like I say, this particular character is going to be in a band. So, you know, also set up some mouth triggers. So, you know, when he's singing away, you know, if he's holding a particular ooh, or like, yeah, <laughs> ee, ah, ooh, you know, like some mouth ready. <laughs> for him to use there um, and then lots of different eyebrows I don't even think I used all these in my expressions above 
And those are just a quick few I knocked up. Most of the time I don't even use those. I just tend to use my swap sets in the timeline. Um, oh, what else have I got? I've also animated a couple of hands. I haven't got the arm replay set up yet. I just thought I'd do this quick video just to show you how it's looking. Um, so yeah, just a quick behind the scenes. In fact, we are building this character um, and just as I got to the end, literally just at the weekend, it's all finished, all ready to go. I've spent quite a few nights of my own private time working on this and then I got a totally brand new idea so I don't even know if I'm ever going to use this character. Um, hopefully we do. Um, but it'll just go in the vault, into the digital vault, and hopefully we'll find a project to use him for in the future. Anyway, just a quick one from me. Good night. Oh, and before I go, I almost forgot. Um, obviously, one of the other things I've set up is lip sync. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, a one, two, three. Um, yeah, I just thought, you know, I made it. Might as well show you. Again, I've gone for that very kind of Ardman um platicine look um it's a star that i very much like um yeah so look as you know anyone who um, uses adobe character animator you can do two things in regards to vocals you can either lip sync you know in real um you can talk in real time record your vocal directly into adobe character animator and the program will lip sync in real time or you can pre-record your audio which is what we normally would do and then you can bring it into Adobe Character Animator and then you can use the automatic lip sync which works very well. They've also got a new feature where you can um, use SRT um, closed caption um, that you can set up in Premiere which you can import into the audio file into Adobe Character An Animator to make the lip syncing even better and then we do like to do our own um, unique thing of where in the timeline I like to take off the end and the um, start of sentences and I'll use an actual trigger so in fact like if you see here I've doubled up all the mouth triggers um, vitamins as triggers as well so you know you see that if I turn this off for a second I've got all those different mouth shapes and yeah the reason I drop them in is so the end of the sentence you can see animate in and out because when we sell our vitamins I keep them um, I don't let basically you don't want if you use the Adobe character animator you've got an option where the animation can animate in and animate out but when it's live lip syncing I don't want to do that because it can mess up the you know the fluidity of the lip syncing I know that's probably gone over most no one's interested in that but uh, there you go. It might be one person that's interested. Anyway, so like I say, just a quick one. That's how he looks when I'm lip syncing in real time. Bye. I'm back again. One last thing. I've just realised looking at this, when I'm turning the face, you can see that even though, like, the 2.5 thing I'm on about, the nose the facial things and the hair and then you know all this down here it's all moving except for if you look at the texture on the face that isn't moving so if i just zoom in move that down a bit the texture on the face isn't moving and that kind of spoils the whole 2.5 d element of it um so i've fixed that and i'm just going to turn it on now and now when he turns he said it's a very sort of change but it does make a big difference so the texture the plasticine texture is moving with the rest of the face again anyone looking at it isn't actually going to notice it it's just going to be a very sort of detail in the background and it will just register that it's moving as it should do but again if i turn that off now you see what I mean? It's, it looks like there's something wrong with the face texture and it kind of spoils the whole 3D, 2.5D effect. So yeah, I've just, all I've done is I've gone on, 
I've added a face behavior um, to the texture. That texture is actually mapped, um, clipped, sorry, to the face shape. If we go into the, as you can see here, that face texture is actually quite large. I'll just click on that and hide it. I've got, this is the shape here, which in Kata Animator, it is clipped to that face shape. Um, and then I've got a facial behavior with the parallax added to it. So as I move my head left and right, that texture is moving around as well. So there you go. That was the last thing I wanted to show you. And that's it. Goodbye.